Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to Child Free LGBTQ Plus. I'm Cody Hetzel. I'll be one of your moderators today. And I am Lenora Fay. I am also one of your moderators today. Thank you to our sponsors, presenting sponsor Child Free Media, Champion Level sponsor Child Free Wealth, and other sponsors 365 Diversity, Best Child Free Life Possible, found in the Facebook groups, Buy Child Free, Buy Child Free, Child Free Family, Child Free Journals, StopHavingKids.org, StreamYard and the books, The Age of the Child by Kristen Tetsy and Wild Egg by Jennifer Flint. And we have our disclaimer the opinions expressed within the content are solely the speakers and do not reflect the opinions and beliefs of the event or its affiliates. So with that, let's get our speakers on stage, please. Hey, familiar face, Ray. I think Ray is now gonna be co-moderating officially for the rest of the day. We have Lore. We have Sarah, hi Sarah, and we have Robert. Hi everyone. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll throw the softball out there with the easy question. Tell us about yourself. Ray, uh, <laughs> I'm this, this the might be the first time someone's ever hearing who you are. So let's go with that. <laughs> hey, ooh, there's a, ooh. Is it for me? I see, I see it in, I see it in there twice. Let's I believe it's Sarah Lou, possibly. There's some feedback. Okay. okay, 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 okay. All right. We're going to push. Uh, no, Ray's in twice, I think. She needs yeah. to. Yeah, I'm going to kick off the second Ray yeah. that's on Thank here. Thank you. Yep. yep, we're good. I'm good? Okay, right perfect. Um, <laughs> what don't you know? So it's Leo season. Big Leo, I'm 29. Today is my birthday. Um, Co-founder of the Polyam Love Style Clubhouse, uh, writer, big fan of dogs, hiking, video games, puzzles, and napping. <laughs> All right, Robert. Hey, good morning. Uh, my name is Robert Graham from Marietta, Georgia. Um, let's see. I'm an engineer for the Department of Transportation. Just a little bit about me. Um, I'm a big traveler, love sports, hiking, anything to do with outside. And recently I just took up knitting. So always, always trying to do something new. All right. Nice. You'll do our merch for next year then. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> just shout out behind the scenes. I went to college with Robert. So it's awesome yeah. having him on here. Uh, glad you were able to join us. Sarah. Yes. Yeah, so. My name is Sarah, pronouns they, them. Um, I've been child-free for 10 plus years. I am polyamorous and um, I practice basically relationship anarchy. I don't believe um, my various relationships, one is not prioritized, prioritized one over the other. Um, and I'm just happy to be here with you all. Excellent. And Lar. Hi, um, I'm Lar. I have been child Free since I was three, as you guys heard <laughs> yesterday. Um, I identify as bisexual. Um, I am monogamous. Um, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> this is Athena. <laughs> hey, Athena. <laughs> Andy Lam, please tell us about yourself. Oh, you're muted. There we go. There you are. My my name is Elon. I'm in Northern California. My pronouns are they, them. I identify as non-binary and trans. Um, my queer is, I guess, the best way to identify as well. And I am also polyamorous. And I also knit, crochet, and do all sorts of things. I'm chronically ill and that's one of the reasons i am child free okay thank you for sharing yeah, i forgot sorry i forgot to add i guess i'm actually i identify as a gay man um i've been married for six six years but with my husband for 17 years all right does anyone else want to yes share? i did not say it myself neither either. did i <laughs> yep i'm i'm queer i'm non-binary um so i will Add that now. <laughs> Ray? Yeah, it's a bunch of queerdos. Um, <laughs> I identify as a polyamorous, biromantic lesbian. So, hey, y'all. And I may be a moderator, but I identify as queer as well. Um, attracted to all. All may send an application. So, 
That's me. Cody is officially the only straight person on this panel. Just a shout out to Cody. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. So, getting into the, so getting into the first question, uh, what do you see as society's assumption of the LGBTQ plus community when it comes to having children? So, Ray, we'll kick it off with you. That was the hardest question to answer. I'm looking at my notes and I'm like, great. Um, I just think the overall assumption is that queer people shouldn't have them and that if they are, if queer people are having children that we're going to cause them some sort of harm or they're gonna all come out queer. Um, and I think there's a small percentage of society that sees like queer people make these active choices and plan so much for children and that's a good thing. Um, but that's kind of out of me. Thank you, Ray. Robert, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to piggyback on what she said. Um, yeah, we're kind of seen as, you know, we shouldn't be having children, um, even though there's a lot of people in the community who have, may have children. Um, but somewhat, it's slowly changing. Um, I think more is our relationships are seen more just norm, quote unquote, normal. Um, people are starting to accept us more as having those heteronormal uh, responsibilities of like having children. So I think that shift is starting to shift more towards, okay, y'all are just normal people. At least that's what I'm seeing from my experience. Thank you, Robert. Sarah, go ahead. Yeah, so I also... Sarah? Sarah? Yeah, yeah. No, Sarah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I agree with things that um, the other panelists have said so far. I think that currently we are, there is a lot of stigma around this topic. Um, this was also the hardest question for me whenever I was taking notes, but I'm really glad that we're discussing it here. Um, I do think that violence is on the rise against the LGBTQIA plus community currently. Um, it's always existed, but we're seeing more and more um, violence and threats made against the community here recently. So. At the end of the day, I mean, there are a lot of stigmas, but we're people, we're valid, and our lives, they're not up for debate, debate, and neither are our choices. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, now it's Laura's turn. Go ahead, Laura. So um, as far as, you know, people outside of the LGBT community, we are seeing an uprise in violence against the community, claims against the community from a conservative subset. However, within the the LGBT community, I am seeing more and more people trying to have a quote unquote traditional life with children. Um, I can remember, I guess I'm a little bit younger than most of us on the panel, but I can remember when I was a baby gay, um, you know, finding these creators and stuff that made me feel comfortable with who I was. Um, and now a lot of those creators and people I looked up to have children. Um, I really saw an uptick in it after 2015. Of course, it's a great thing that we can, you know, get married and everything like that. But I actually think the pushback that we're seeing and the, the oh, queer people shouldn't have kids attitude is a mostly conservative attitude. Whereas I think in liberal and progressive spaces, um, pronatalism does affect us. Thank you, Laura. Elon, go ahead. Uh, unmute. You have to unmute. Yes, thank you. Keep forgetting that. It's all right. We're here to remind you. <laughs> Thanks. You rock. Um, it seems like in the 90s and in the 80s, a lot of people chose to adopt because, or maybe use a friend's sperm that they got in the McDonald's bathroom because that was the only way or other ways were really expensive, but adoption was really huge in our community and having your own kid just wasn't a thing because of pushback against cishet norms or because of cishet norms. And it was seen as a great thing. Oh, you're adopting a child. How wonderful. And it still is. Adoption can be a great thing because we, as we, we know, it doesn't always mean a great thing. But now it's saying, oh, it's 
what are these gays doing to these kids as everybody has said before and now with we've been given so many rights that some people want to take away from us it's like but you have rights now don't you want to have kids and take advantage of your rights it's like i have the choice to use these rights to either get married or not get married have kids or not have kids these are my choices these are my rights i will you will use them because because they are my choices even though they want to take these rights away which is a whole another debate and another panel. So, yeah, and so with that, in a sense, why is it important <laughs> for the LGBTQ plus community to take their seat at the table in the child free conversation? Um, Ray, we'll start with yeah, you. Yeah, so for a long time, you know, folks believed that queer people couldn't have kids, right? You know, when I first came out, they were like, oh, you're never gonna have kids, right? Um, however, queer people, are making informed decisions when it comes to having children because being a parent is a choice. There's a lot of planning that goes into it. If you're gonna do IVF, IUI, find a friend, how are you gonna you know, do it? So I think that it's important to come to the table as some of, as a big group that is the most informed in my opinion, that's coming with all the facts and all of it together and genuinely wants this to be a part of their life. And I think it's important that we're there for these conversations. All right, Robert, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I think we need to have a place at the table just because kind of like she said, I mean, it's a part of our community. It's a part of, you know, just part of our lives. Um, and it goes back again to just some people are not, they just don't see us as human. And it's just trying to normalize our existence. Um, so just, just showing that, you know, we, is every issue that goes on in, you know, heterosexual communities. I mean, we're pretty much faced with it too. So, I mean, we need to be part of these conversations. Yeah. And Sarah. Yeah. I mean, I agree with everything everyone has said, but I mean, ultimately, um, because we can also be child free, it's not limited to just that one point of view. So, um, we absolutely are allowed to take our seat at this table. Yeah. And Lar. For me, I think the most important thing, at least in my personal experience, to take a seat at the table um, is that, you know, in 2015, when we got the right to get married, um, I actually felt guilty for still like not wanting children because at that point in time, I had only ever dated women. Um, I dated my first uh, male partner that year, actually. Um, and so for the longest time, I had thought that you know, having kids was off the table for me because I would never be able to get married. And then we got the right to get married. And I still didn't want that traditional kind of lifestyle. Like I said, I am monogamous. I would like to get married one day. Um, but I think that the LGBT community is such a diverse and unique community um, that it really is important to validate those of us who still do not want children, who still do not want that traditional lifestyle. Um, because I do think that there is a difference in perception between LGBT couples who do choose to have children and those who do not choose to have children. Yeah, and Elon, you're up. <laughs> it's, as everybody has said before, we still, our voice has become muted over the years by the overwhelming cis hetero community and it's kind of our turn kind of the turn of the minority groups at large to stand up stand out <laughs> have our turn at the child free table here saying this is what we're doing whether we're gonna have that that normal, the normal lifestyle, or we're going to do what we want to do and educate people whether they're like, oh, but you're gay. Well, actually, I'm bi and bi couples, whether it's a man and a, a, a woman are still bi 
and they can have kids. So bi people can have kids. Don't judge on preconceived norms. So it's point. it's also educating people on the LGBT community and things of, of that sort. Yep. So are you comfortable in child-free spaces? Specifically being open about your sexuality. Ray, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm comfortable everywhere I go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what? Awesome. <laughs> um, absolutely. I love being in the child-free spaces um, because there's already a sense of community. And then as a queer person, just finding more community, there's a lot more queer people in these spaces now. So I'm, I'm always comfortable there. Excellent. Graham? Oh, I'm sorry, Robert? <laughs> My name's confused. No, it's all good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty comfortable anywhere. Um, yeah, I've never had any issues. I mean, I'm a super social person. I talk about talk to anybody about anything. I, I don't necessarily, I'm not in the closet, but I'm not, a lot of times I'm not waving a rainbow flag. But I mean, if you ask me, I'm going to tell you, yeah, I'm, I'm married to my husband. But yeah, I've never had any issues. I've never felt uncomfortable, so. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I would say yes, generally. However, um, I grew up. I was born and raised in Texas. I lived there for 28 years. Um, child-free spaces in Texas. As someone who is a part of the LGBTQIA+ community, is very different than these child-free spaces that I have experienced here in Washington um, since moving to Washington State. So yes, in general, I do feel comfortable and, you know, included in the child-free spaces, but I have had those moments where, you know, there's still people within child-free spaces that aren't always so welcoming um, to people within the LGBTQIA plus community. Thank you, Sarah. Laura, go ahead. Um, I pretty much am comfortable discussing my sexuality anywhere. Um, Again, I don't like yell from the rooftops, like I'm bisexual the first time I meet someone, that would be kind of strange. Um, but I I will say um, for me, and again, I live in Boston, so this might be different. I am less comfortable saying I am child-free in LGBT spaces than I am saying I'm LGBT in child-free spaces. Interesting. Elon, go ahead. I'm pretty comfortable saying I'm child free or LGBTQ in child free spaces. I'm, I, some people say, well, you're pretty visibly queer. I'm like, oh, is it the haircut? Is the non binary symbol on my, on my, scalp what what is it <laughs> is it the rainbow it, what is it people i don't get it i'm, I'm harder. just me <laughs> cry harder wear more rainbows i, I, I don't I, I don't i don't get it no the shirt was 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 on purpose um but uh it's times when it's like they're like well uh do do you put it's i live in in california so it's pretty liberal out here but i live in a bit of a more red part of the state so it's not as accepting if you go outside of the internet so i'm and they're and they're like you don't have kids well, maybe it's a little bit better since you might screw them up. So, and then it's like, well, who knows? Yeah. Maybe and, and it's Laura because brought up, Laura brought up it's, a great point. If I'm sorry to interrupt you here, we got to no. go on with the, the questions. But what's the difference being child free in an LGBTQ plus space versus being LGBTQ plus in a child free space? Sounds confusing, but you can figure it out, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ray, let's go with you. So lately I'm finding that a lot of queer folks in these queer spaces have kids, right? They have families. I mean, I get it. We're 30 plus, right? That's what we're supposed to do. Um, but it can be overwhelming, especially when, you know, you want to get away from certain conversations. 
Um, but on the opposite end, being queer in child-free spaces, I find is a little bit more comfortable because I already know that the main commonality is we're all child-free. So then when you bump into more queer people in child-free spaces, it's like, yay, more community, right, is here. Um, so I find at this current moment, it is easier to be queer in child-free spaces than to be child-free in queer spaces. Yeah, Robert, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I'll kind of want to piggyback on that. Um, I've noticed that more and more people within the, you know, gay community, they are having more kids, more people going to the, you know, family aspect, and they kind of starting to look at you a little bit sideways if you don't have kids. Um, and I kind of agree. I, sometimes I feel a little bit more comfortable discussing, having these conversations in a, just a child-free setting. You know, sexuality, you know, it may come up, but usually it's, oh, okay, you're, okay, you're gay, okay, we'll just keep going with the conversation. It's not really a big deal. But yeah, it seems like there is a little bit more pressure uh, within our community to, I guess, create those, again, it goes back to that, that normal type of relationships and their definition of a family. Um, I don't know if it's just, people just want to feel, again, normal. So, you know, we should be getting married. We should be having kids. That's what you're, you know, that's what we all were taught as kids. You're, that's what you're supposed to do. You get married, you have kids, you live hell, uh, happily ever after. Um, so I think it's, for me, it seems like there's more pressure coming on the, from our own community that we shouldn't be child free. Yeah. And Sarah. Yeah. So I feel like I'm actually uh, the opposite of everyone on this that's one. Okay. So. <laughs> For me, I think the biggest difference that I have experienced is whether I do or do not feel safe. Um, I feel like being child free in the LGBTQIA plus community has been easier for me because I actually don't feel like I could potentially be around someone who wants to you know, cause harm to someone within the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and again, that goes back from being raised in Texas, the experiences I've had there versus these experiences that I'm now having in Washington. I definitely feel more comfortable and more safe being child-free in the LGBTQ plus community versus being very openly LGBTQ plus in a child-free space. Um, I am that person that I like wearing rainbow. I am, you know, here to let people know that I am queer, I am here, and I'm proud of it. I mean, I even made this bow tie to wear today for you Oh, that's all. awesome. Um, so yes, that is, that's child-free and LGBTQ space is where I feel more comfortable. All right, Laura. So I definitely feel as if I do feel more comfortable in the child-free space than uh, being LGBT in a child-free space than being uh, child-free in an LGBT space. However, I do have to preface this by saying I typically pass as straight. Um, and that's because I am very, very feminine presenting. Um, I date men sometimes when I'm in a mood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, me too. That, that has um, something to do with the differences in experiences that I would have. So if I walked out, uh, I do, however, feel like now that more and more LGBT people are starting to have kids, I have actually found that it is easier for me to find men to date who identify as child-free than it is to find women to date who identify as child-free. And with me being monogamous and kind of looking for a long-term partnership, um, that also plays a role in it. I have gotten some strange looks. Um, and last time I went to Pride, there was a bunch of children around. And 10 years ago, when I first started going to Pride events, that didn't happen. And so it did make me feel a little bit pushed out of my own community um, because they're selling baby clothes at Pride now. Um, and not that that's bad. It's not a bad thing. But um, I do see pronatalism seeping into our community more and more. Yeah. And uh, Elon, how about you? I mostly feel more comfortable in an LGBTQ space because most of the time, if I'm in just a child-free space, by my face looks and my voice, I get misgendered and I'm really uncomfortable with that and a lot of people just don't try. And in an LGBTQ space, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry and fix that. And, and, and I really appreciate that. But in a child-free space, 
they may not try or they may not care or they'll just laugh. And I don't, and I'm like, not wanted. And some people do who try and they don't care or they do care. Sorry. It's a really difficult topic. And, but some people just think it's funny. They're like, ha, 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 look at Look at that. They're so sensitive about it. And it's something that they may do once and not again. So in a child-free space, being being queer is hard. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. So how challenging is it to remain child-free when in a straight passing relationship? Um, Whoever, I'll just say whoever wants to answer that because that might not apply to everybody here, but. Okay, um, okay Ray and Laura, Ray, go ahead first. Um, I think it can be a lot harder because you feel a lot more of those heteronormative pressures when you're perceived in as straight, right? In a straight passing relationship, those milestones that are associated with it. And then just the actual risk of um, becoming pregnant if you're dating someone who could become pregnant or get you pregnant, right? If you're using your anatomy for those reasons. Um, I think it's really hard. And Laura, go ahead. So for me, this is going to be an interesting answer. Um, so I will say like societal pressure wise, it's a lot harder. Um, I always knew I was attracted to women. I did not discover I was attracted to men until I was 19 or 20 years old. Um, and so when I was in relationships with women, when I was younger, it was never a question. There was never bingos. There was people just, I don't think thought about it back then because this was again, pre-2015 when uh, gay marriage became legal in every state in the United States. And I was in North Carolina where it was illegal uh, in college. So nobody really said anything. When I started dating men is when the questions started coming in from everybody else. Like, oh, are y'all going to get married and have babies? Um, you know, my first boyfriend's aunt told me that I needed to get my uh, endo under control so I could have healthy babies. And I was sitting there like, healthy what? Um, you know, uh, but I will say as far as dating, again, I have dated more men that are okay with being child free than women. And I do feel like that is how pronatalism affects women. Because I think even if you are an LGBT woman, you still are getting the messaging growing up. You're still getting the, a woman's job in life is to be a mother. And so I think that that's more specifically because my, um, same-sex relationships are with women, and I think pronatalism affects women to a higher degree. Um, so I would say it's harder from the outside, but from the inside of the relationship, for me, it has been easier to find men who are, you know, if you get pregnant, we'll get an abortion, men who are more willing to accept that I don't want children. Laura, your DMs might blow up from other child-free women wanting you to pass those names on <laughs> of the child-free guys. Uh, they flock to me, but I will say I do put it in my bio on dating apps. So, like, I just flat out say in my bio for whether I'm swiping on men or women, I say I am child-free. I am getting my uterus out. There is no – you got to be really – really like upfront about it <laughs> all right so we have to wrap but i do want to add something personally um this still makes me nervous saying this but the child free space has been the first place that i have been able to speak about my queerness um those close to me have known i was bisexual you know i think when i was in high school i first set it out and it wasn't until i was 38 so only as of two years ago i've been able to publicly acknowledge like acknowledge my queerness and thank you the, to the top of the community. This has been the first place I've been able to do it. And you know, this is public and I know there are people watching that know me that may not know this and I my heart is beating out of my chest, but just a shout out to the child free space. And this is why, you know, we foster, I specifically foster the conversation for the LGBTQ plus community in within the child free spaces, because it is important. Okay. We all love so you with that, we all love so, you. <laughs> so with that, let's wrap up. Please tell us how, uh, please tell the audience how they can reach out to you. Um, we are going to start with uh, Ray. 
Yeah, so <laughs> yes. you can find me on Clubhouse at Polyam Lifestyle. I do host queer and polyam specific rooms. You can also find me on Instagram at Kyrae, K-A-I-R-H-A-E. Thank you. Uh, Robert, go ahead. Hey, uh, you can find me on Instagram. It's Robert Graham Photos, all one word. Um, yeah, that's probably the best way to find me. It's just use that post, try to post inspirational or funny things. You know, there's enough negative energy out there. I try to add a little positivity in everybody's life. Thank you. Sarah, go ahead. Yep, you can find me on Instagram. My handle is Coffee Pot Queer, one word. And Laura. You can find me on TikTok, Twitter, and my website, which is badfitches or badfitches.com, where, again, I got some cool crop tops. Kids, no thanks. I like cats. And all proceeds from anything on the website go to abortion funds. Um, or you can find me on Instagram at badfitchesofficial because, again, someone took my hand. <laughs> thanks, Laura. Uh, Ilan, go ahead. Uh, you can find me on Instagram or TikTok at Rainbow Spoonie, where I talk about queer and disabled issues. All right, everyone. Thank you so, so much for contributing to this panel today. It's been a great conversation. For sure. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Bye.